For me personally, as I think of Mother's Day, I love reflecting on God's goodness from generation to generation. And I'm personally so glad we're a part of a generational church, amen. On Thursday morning, I was here having a meeting at church. I had my two littlest kids with me. And I walked through the Sanctuary Cafe and there in the Sanctuary Cafe was a group of faithful men and women singing the praises of God, our classics. Aren't they wonderful? And my grandma is amongst the classics and she was there worshiping God. And there was such a beautiful presence of God in that place as people were glorifying Him. One generation declaring God's goodness to the next. And then I walked across into the other building on, um, the, where the auditorium is and there I could hear the sound of our school, um, school worship band glorifying God, practicing for assembly. And I was just so blessed to think we're a part of a generational church, one generation declaring God's goodness to the next. And our God is so faithful from generation to generation. And so this morning I've entitled my sermon, Generation to Generation. And um, I pray it blesses you and um, that you're encouraged after this morning. So let me pray as we start off. God, I do thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you, Father, for who you are. We thank you, God, for your word that never returns void. We thank you, Father, you are a miracle working God who's still speaking in 2022. And so we glorify the name of Jesus in this place. And I ask, Father, that as we share your word this morning, that every heart would be encouraged, that you would build faith in the lives of your people. I believe, Father, for miracles in this place today. We thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Awesome. Well, as we start off, I want to read you a scripture. It's found in Psalm 100, verse 5. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. All throughout scripture, you see God working generationally. When he first introduced himself, or, or one of the ways he introduced himself in the Old Testament, is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And if you know that story, you'd know that Abraham was the great grandfather, Isaac was the grandfather, and Jacob was the son. It was three generations. In Exodus 3, verse 15, it says, God said to Moses, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. He's a generational God. In the first book of the New Testament, there's a whole first half of that chapter that is dedicated to the genealogies that went before Jesus. Generation after generation after generation, genealogies until the birth of Jesus. We serve a generational God. There's huge chunks, chapters of the Bible where they, that are dedicated purely to the genealogies, telling us that we're here today because of the faithfulness of somebody that's gone before us. And likewise, what we do today matters for somebody coming up behind us, generation to generation. And my prayer today, as we look at our God being a generational God, is one that you'd be encouraged about different elements of who God is, that you'd leave today refreshed and inspired knowing that we serve a God who is bigger than anything that you're facing, and secondly, that you would have faith in your spirit to understand that every single person, no matter what generation you find yourself in, has a part to play in what God is doing. As you read through those genealogies all throughout the Bible, you see this theme of generations, God declaring the, the people declaring the goodness of God from one generation to the next. And they're not just names on paper, they're people, they're stories reflecting the goodness of God to their generation, the faithfulness of God. They're a story that, that shows the faithfulness of God from one generation to the next. We serve a faithful God and He is faithful to every generation. So the first part of what I, that I, that I so encourages me as I think of our God as being a generational God and I pray it'll encourage you too, is that He's an eternal God. Isaiah 40 verse 28 says, Have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Psalm 90 verse two says, Before the mountains were brought forth, 
or ever you formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Revelations 22 verse 13 says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. One thing I love and one thing that just so inspires me as I read through the genealogies, the faithfulness of God from generations is that we serve an eternal God. He sits outside of time. He said, I am the beginning and I am the end. That's the reason that when God speaks promises over our lives, it's so powerful because He's not just looking at where you are today. He sees what the next season is. Yes, He sees where you are today and He's walking with you, whatever you're facing today. But likewise, He sees the season ahead, which is why when God says weeping might endure for a night, but there's joy coming in the morning, He's not saying it just as a nice encouragement to where you are now. He's saying it because He's already in the season ahead and He's saying, I know that there's something greater for you in your future. I know there's joy coming out of the season you're facing. It's why when he says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. They're good plans to give you a hope and a future. Again, he's not just speaking some nice encouragement from a far off place. He's speaking it as the eternal God who's already in the season ahead, who sees and knows those good plans because he's sitting outside the sphere of time and he's looking at the season that's coming ahead for you. And he says, I know those plans. I'm already there. They're good plans. No matter what season you're facing today, you can rest assured that nothing is a surprise to God. There's nothing you're walking through that God doesn't know about. There's nothing that you're walking through, no season that is too difficult for God, He is sovereign over all, which means He's just as much God as the season that's coming ahead as He has been as the seasons that have passed. We serve an eternal God and He is faithful to every generation. The second thing I'd love you to be encouraged about when we think of our generational God is His unchanging nature and His love and his faithfulness. Hebrews 13 verse eight says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Psalm 119 verse 89 says, your word, O Lord, is everlasting. It is firmly fixed in the heavens. Your faithfulness continues through all generations. You establish the earth and it endures. Titus 1 verse two says, and hope of eternal life, which God who never lies promised before the, uh, before the ages began. And Psalm 100 verse five, I read it earlier, the Lord is good, His unfailing love continues forever and His faithfulness continues to all generations. As we look through the passages of Scripture and you see the different elements of who God, who God is through the ages, I'm just so encouraged that the God we serve is an unchanging God and that His faithfulness to His Word and His promise are just as much relevant for our lives today as they were the day that the pages of the Bible were were written, amen? He is an unchanging God who's faithful in His nature, who's faithful to His Word over your life and His unchanging love never ends from generation to generation. He is faithful. That means that the same promises that my grandparents stood upon are the same promises I can stand upon today and that my children and my children's children can stand upon as well. That means that the same miracle working God that parted the Red Sea has power over the situation you're facing today. That means when God called Himself Jehovah Jireh, our provider, He wasn't just speaking to a group of people back 2,000 years ago. He's speaking that over your life today because of His unchanging nature. He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He is the Lord God, our peace. He is the God who works miracles, signs and wonders. He is a faithful God from generation to generation. That means the same God who walked through the fire with Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. You can rest assured that no matter what season you walk through, He's walking through it with you. The same God who answered the prayers in the book of Acts is the same prayer answering God that's here today. 
The same power that raised Jesus Christ from the grave is alive and at work in our lives today. He is the eternal, never changing, faithful God. And His love and His faithfulness is from one generation to the next. And what I love is it's not just about His, if it was just about His faithfulness, that would be enough but He couples it with His love. He's not just a fire of God that's all powerful, that just keeps His promises, but He is intimately acquainted with all your ways. You can rest assured today that you serve a God who loves you. He's a faithful God who's not just keeping His promises because that's what He does, but He's keeping His promises because it's coupled with His love. He loves you. His love and His faithfulness, I believe, is extending into whatever situation you're facing here today because He is a faithful God and His faithfulness is from one generation to the next. He is an eternal, unchanging, never failing God of faithfulness and love. And the part about this that really challenges me and excites me is that all throughout generations, God chose people to accomplish His plan and to show His faithfulness to the world. He didn't just do it on His own, He could have, but He chose to choose generations and groups of people, men and women, to display His splendour, to show His faithfulness. And I said it earlier, as we look at these genealogies, it's not just names on papers, those are stories, those are lives, made up of decisions, made up of, of faithfulness of serving God. Lives that reflect the faithfulness of our God from generation to generation. And all throughout history, all throughout the ages, God has commissioned people. And He said, what you do today, those decisions you make today, those priorities you're setting in your lives today, those things that you are choosing for the way you're gonna do life today is gonna impact somebody that's coming up behind you. There's a generation that's gonna be looking at your life and either you're setting them up for blessing or perhaps they might need to fight some battles that you never got to finish. And as you look through these, this trend of genealogies throughout the Bible, one thing that I can't help but notice is that there's a couple of themes and one of them is there's either generational battles that were fought and those that fought those battles well meant that the next generation didn't have to fight them all this generational blessing that came because the generation before lived a certain way and as a result, it set the next generation up for blessing. Generational blessings and generational battles. You can see this in stories like the children of Israel who, if you know the story, God set them apart as His very own and He, he chose them out of all the nations of the world. He said, this is my people and He promised them the promised land. But it was this generation that, then had to go, there was a generation of God's people that then had to go and fight for the promised land. And because they won that battle, it meant that the generations to come could live in a place of safety, could live in the promises of God, could enjoy the goodness of God, because back here there was a generation fighting for them for that promised land. You see that in the book of Ruth, how she left everything, she made a decision, she reprioritized her life. She made a decision that she was gonna be grafted into God's people. She had to leave her family behind. She had to leave the past behind. But as she grafted herself into God's kingdom, she was listed in the genealogy of Jesus. Her decisions impacted generations and generations and generations because of one woman's faithfulness to make a new decision, to choose this day who she was gonna serve. And I wanna encourage you this morning, because I know some of you might be here facing battles and fighting some battles. But I wanna encourage you and speak to you and say that if you're fighting battles, keep on going because your children are gonna be the ones who benefit from the battles that you win. Another example of where you can see this is in the story of Solomon, of David and Solomon. And King Solomon got to inherit his father's kingdom and all its wealth and all its glory because his father made certain decisions and reprioritized certain things and, and made sure his God was Lord. Solomon got to take over a kingdom of blessing. 
But likewise, there was also a few battles that King David never finished. And so not only did Solomon inherit his father's blessing, but he also inherited his father's battles. And in 1 Kings 1, 2 verse 1 to 9, it's the final words of David and he's speaking to his son Solomon and he says, when David's time to die was near, he told his son Solomon, I'm going the way of all the earth, so be strong, show yourself to be a man. Do what the Lord your God tells you, walk in his ways, keep all of his laws and his word by what is written in the law of Moses. Then you will do well in all that you do in every place you go. Then the Lord will keep his promise to me. He has said to me, your sons must be careful to keep the way, careful of their way to walk before me in truth with all of their hearts and soul. If they do, you will never be without a man on the throne of Israel. Now you know that Zariah, the son of Joab, did to me. You know what he did to the two captains of the army of Israel. He killed Abner, the son of Ner, and Amasa, the son of Jether, in the time of peace as if it was the time of war. He put the blood of war on his belt and on his shoes of his feet. So act with wisdom. Do not let his gray hair go down to the grave in peace. And that passage goes on to say another battle that David started but wasn't able to finish. And he said to Solomon, you need to finish that battle. So not only did King Solomon inherit his father's blessing, but he also inherited his father's battles. And again, I know that there might be some people here fighting battles and and sometimes you can be so immersed in the battle that you can remember what it's for. And I wanna encourage you today, you're fighting that battle for your children and your children's children. Maybe you're fighting battles of addiction here today and you, you just need a reminder that you're not just fighting that battle for yourself. Maybe you're fighting a battle for your marriage or your children and you're standing on the promises of God. I wanna encourage you today that it's not just gonna be you that benefits from that victory, but you're standing in victory for your children, your children's children, for generations that are coming before you. Somebody one day will thank you and say thank you for fighting that battle. Now I don't need to. And likewise, the decisions that you're making today for your family, the decisions you're making today around where your priorities lie, the decisions you're making today around the way you're gonna live your life, there's gonna be somebody who benefits from the blessing because of the decisions you made today. We can leave blessing or battles to our children and we get to decide which ones. You see, when I think about this, there's a couple of ways that I personally have been blessed and that I can apply it personally to my life. And one of them is in the natural and then also again in the spiritual household that we're a part of. And here in the natural, I've got, we've got four generations here in church. And my grandma, I think she's up the back there. Gran, is that you? Do you wanna give everyone a wave? She's amazing. There she is on the screen. She is a faithful, faithful woman. And she has 13 great grandchildren that are here in City Impact Church. What a legacy. She's just beautiful. She's our greatest cheer team. She's at late night prayers and prayer meetings and here every Sunday. She's, um, she's a woman of faithfulness. And I say to my children, I've got four children. And I say to them, I say, one day I'm gonna be like Omi. I'm gonna still be reading my Bible. I'm still gonna be here in church, worshiping God. She sets such a beautiful example to us. And I know she represents one of many people that have wisdom, that set an example, that show us enduring faith, that can speak of the goodness of God. And and so for you, we honour you and we thank you. We need you. The next generation needs your faithfulness. The next generation needs to see a group of faithful people that still serve God despite the trials that life brings. And so we honour you today and we love you and we say thank you for your enduring faith, for the example you set to those coming behind you. Likewise, I've got my mum in the church and she came up on that picture before. Many of you will know her as Pastor Kim, her and my mum and dad. I've also got Joe's parents that are here today. And so to you, Lisa, happy Mother's Day. I'm so grateful for her. She's such a huge help to me with raising my babies and I love you. Um, But my mum, she's an amazing, faithful woman and she's a woman of prayer. She's a woman of wisdom. She's a woman of strength who's fought the good fight of faith. And likewise, I honour her because I know that, well, she led me to the Lord when I was like maybe five years old in my bedroom. All throughout my life, she showed me the example of what it means to be a woman of faith. And so I honour her. And and likewise, I know there's many people across the sanctuary this morning who represent that same group of people who are cheering us on 
who are helping us raise our babies, who are giving us wisdom, who are speaking life over us, who are encouraging us, who are, who are telling us to keep on going. Don't worry, there's another season coming. It gets better. Who are cheering us on from the next season. And, and so to you, we say thank you. I've benefited from so many amazing faithful people who've gone before me. And so we wanna say thank you, we need you. Please keep encouraging us. Please keep cheering us on. Please keep giving us your wisdom. You add such a strength to this place. And so we honour you today, we say thank you. We love you and we need you. And likewise for myself in the natural, I've got four children. They came up on the screen before. My youngest is two, my eldest is seven. And they're a joy. <laughs> it's busy, but it's fun. <laughs> And likewise, I understand that in the natural, I've got a responsibility to raise my children in the ways of God. There's something about generational faith that's really powerful, but you've got to fight for that. It doesn't just happen because of, by default, you've got to fight for Jesus to be the Lord of your home. And so I personally have made decisions and, and I've learned from other people who you know, have done similar things where I make sure my children see me reading the Word of God as we do things as a family for you know, the community or making somebody a meal or whatever it is, I, I want my children to know that what we do as a family isn't just because we come to church on Sunday, it's because Jesus is the Lord of our heart, He's the Lord of our home, He's the Lord of our lives. And so I reprioritize my day around showing my children what's important. And, and I know there's many others that do that. And, and I know I personally, I'm, I'm speaking as a younger mum, but I can also speak as a daughter who's seen the fights of my mum and my dad. And I say thank you to them now. Being on the other side, I saw the fights that they fought. And I know I walk in victory. And I know there's many other children that are coming from this place that will one day look back at the fights you're fighting today and say thank you, mum and dad, because of what you prioritised, because of you bringing us to church, despite us fighting in the car and throwing tantrums on the way out the door. And even if you're running late, just get your children to church. It might be a fight sometimes, but let's just prioritise the things that we know are gonna be the things that set our children up for blessing. One generation declaring God's goodness to the next. And likewise, in the spiritual, we're a part of a spiritual house, a spiritual family, and we have incredible generations that have gone before us. And I know Pastor Peter and Bev, in this place, there's so many people that would say that there's a, a now room in this house because of the way that you guys have made for them. And Joe and I are so conscious of that. Joe has a, a big plaque in his office, I don't know what you'd call it, some artwork, and that's what it says. It says, let us ride on the shoulders of those who have gone before us, uh, gone before, serving our generation, building and laying up a legacy so that those coming behind us may go further, climb higher, reach more for his glory. And I know that Pastor Peter and Bev have fought some battles so that we could have this platform. I know that they fought some battles so that we could have a safe place to bring our children to. I know they fought some battles in the spirit realm so that we can have a place of victory where miracles happen, where there's signs and wonders, a place of prayer, a place of worship. And so we honour them. And likewise, as I look at the genealogies of people that have gone before us, we know that there's a place for every single person. We know that there's been many people who've made a way in this place for the next generation to come. And so today, as I look at those stories, I, I put myself, and I, I pray you would as well, you put yourself into those genealogies and you honour those who have gone before, and then you look ahead to those coming up behind us. And you think, what am I gonna do today that's gonna make an impact for those that are coming behind? What fights am I gonna have to fight today so that the next generation doesn't have to? What decisions am I gonna make today so that our children can live in blessing? I became so much more conscious of this as I became a mum. And I know up in the upstairs boardroom, as you walk out through the upstairs offices, there's, um, and I've got, I think we've got a picture of it. Thank you so much, Nat. It says, I've allotted you an inheritance in this place. And I became so aware of the godly inheritance I had in this place when I started having kids. And I saw my children begin to get saved at the elders and kids church. And I saw my children raising their hands in worship and, and they experiencing God for themselves. And I said, praise God for a group of faithful men and women who've built a place for us to bring our children to where they can experience God. 
I've got one of those stories where I've experienced uh, the benefit of a, a church all the way through from, um, ch- from being a child myself all the way right through, found my husband in the house, got married here, and then, you know, brought my, now I bring my children here. There's an inheritance in this place. Praise God for that. It comes on the back of battles that were fought for us. And likewise, as we insert ourselves into that story, we know there's gonna have to be some battles that we fight for those that are coming behind us in this place. And I don't know about you, but I'm willing to fight so that this place can be a place where the Word of God is declared in power. Where we're not watering God down the Word of God for the sake of culture, but it is preached in power because it's the ultimate truth of God Almighty Himself. We, we reclaim it in power because we know it has the potential to change the hearts of man. We know it can turn a life around. And so I know I'm speaking to a group of people here today who are willing to fight so that the Word of God remains what we preach here at City Impact Church, not just for our sake, but for the generations coming behind us, so that they know that the Word of God, when it is spoken, has the power to transform the human heart, to save the lost soul, to bring healing to the brokenhearted. There is power in the Word of God. There's still power in the Word of God. 2,000 years later, we're still preaching that same Gospel that has the power to save souls. But we're gonna have to fight for that. We're gonna have to fight against the current culture that tells us there's no absolute truth. And I don't know about you, but I'm prepared to fight for the Word of God to remain what we preach here, the ultimate source of truth for everything in our lives. Likewise, we're gonna have to fight so that our children have a representation of Christ's likeness in this place that as people come into this place, they experience the love of Jesus, the acceptance of their Saviour. We're gonna have to fight to make sure that this is a place where there's no gossip and no wrong motives and no slander and no division. You have to fight for those things sometime. Pastor Peter and Bev have fought for that just recently. We praise God for that battle that they fought. We now live as the next generation and the, the fruit of that. But likewise, we know that we're gonna have to fight some battles so that as our children come here, they can experience the true representation of a biblical church, of a church of power, of a church of love. And when I say love, I'm not just talking about like a nice feeling kind of love. I'm talking about the power, the love of God. There's power in the love of God. We want our children to experience that. We want the kids that, that come off in families who don't know about Jesus to, to come into this place and see that this is a place where they can find family, a place they can call home, an altar they can worship at. We're gonna have to fight for that to make sure that this place, City Impact Church, is a place of love, we're gonna have to fight to make sure that we see the gospel not just proclaimed in word, but in power. We're gonna have to fast and pray so that we can make sure our children still grow up seeing miracles. I don't know about you, but I'm willing to fast and pray to show the goodness of God to our children and our children's children, to let this be a place where They don't just hear the Word of God preached, but they see miracles happen. They see the breakthrough to their prayer. When they come in with prayer requests, they see the power of God that is able to work miracles in their lives and in their situations. We're gonna have to fight for that. It's gonna take some work in the spirit realm, but if we do that, there's gonna be generations. It's not just for us. It's for the church that our children and their children will experience, a generational church, because we serve a generational God. We're gonna have to fight to make sure that Jesus remains the Lord of our lives. The only one who deserves our worship and our praise, Jesus Christ. We have to fight for that in our homes. We have to fight for that in in our minds, in our church. The Bible says, choose this day who you're gonna serve. But I don't know about you, I want my children to see a church that is sold out for the kingdom of God who believes that Jesus is Lord Lord and and has lives that reflect that in every way, we're gonna have to fight some battles for the sake of our children. And every single person has a part to play in that. I'm excited about the generational God we serve. 
And I know that same God who's been faithful to generations, from generation to generation to generation. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. He's still working miracles. He's still bringing healing. He's still saving souls. And so we can rest assured in the faithful God that we serve that He's gonna do some awesome things in the years to come because He's the eternal faithful God from one generation to the next. Yes, there might be some battles we need to fight for the sake of our children, but we can rest assured knowing with full confidence in whom we have believed that He is faithful to His Word, He's faithful to His promises, that yes, there might be battles, but He'll supernaturally grace us and walk through those battles with us, fighting on our behalf, carrying the load. He's faithful from one generation to the next. I wanna finish with the scripture as found in Ephesians 3. It says, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, To Him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever, amen. To Him be glory in the church. It's all about Jesus. To Him be the glory in the church through Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever, amen.